Our topic for the month is Born to Reign. We just have two messages today and next Sunday to round up the teaching on Born to Reign. But I'd like you to know something we said during the COVID-19. That you have a certificate of exemption. I was a certificate of exemption. Are you hearing me? Hope you know God's people are exceptional. You are special. They are exempted from every satanic excesses. Anything Satan has done in your life or Satan is doing, you are exempted. The Lord wants me to pray for you to enjoy that exemption in the name of Jesus Christ. And I will be praying as I, as I talk, I pray so we can close on time. Are you hearing me? So be ready to receive divine insight. One of the things that happened recently is that I've got a lot of testimonies of people who for the past three, four weeks, all the prophetic declaration I made, all the word of knowledge, people like us to call them prophecy, but the Bible talks more of word of knowledge, word of wisdom. All the word of knowledge and word of wisdom I gave have become realities. Are you hearing me? I decree that people will sell their houses, sell properties, sell. They were selling and testifying of what God is doing. People will get jobs. They came to me and said they are getting jobs. One woman came and gave some money. said, I vowed that if I can sell this thing, I will give so much. And she gave it. And several, several persons, I'm just, just testifying to what God is saying as a result of these prophetic ways. If yours has not come, it will come now. I say it will come this week. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I just give God the glory and all the praise. I love God. Can I hear you say, I love God? Raise up your right and say, I love God. Uh, that is the truth. As believers, as the righteousness of God, as people born to reign on earth, we enjoy immunity from every calamity befalling humanity. We enjoy you immunity. Everybody say, I enjoy immunity. See, I'm immunized. You know what they talk immunization, when they take, give you some injection. It's, it's horrible that they are giving uh, COVID-19 injection in the name of vaccination, but surprisingly, the vaccine is not immunizing people. Are you hearing me? That's why I'm not interested in taking it. I said you, when I'm sleeping, you force me to take it. I will know my kuro kuro eye like this stand and say, eh, eh, eh. because you have not proved to me that it is immunizing me. I will say immunization. Though those who have taken it here, you will not be happy with me because I found that those who took it, they don't like somebody to say, don't take it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But you have a right to take your decisions, have you? Uh, so if you want to take it, it's, it's not a sin to take it. Are you hearing? Let me talk as a pastor now. It's not a sin. No. If you want to take, you are convinced. Uh -huh. Because I saw somebody who took it. Took first vaccine, took second vaccine. And then tested negative. Only to travel from here to one country, merely go to the other country. They test in the same positive. I said, ah, but you took it. They tested you here negative. You just move from no more than 24 hours. They say it's now what? Positive. I said, this can't think. I said, I don't like that. <laughs> Praise God. But when we talk of immunity, God gives you immunity from calamity. That is against humanity. If God, God's immunity is not COVID 19 vaccination, if He gives it to you one shot of it, set those things forever. Are you hearing me? If He gives you a shot, one shot of His ejection for prosperity, you will never be poor again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If it gives you a shot against demonic power, they will not have power over your life. Receive that shot by the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. The shot is not to give you injection. It's the word of God. Everybody said the word of God is my vaccine. When you take that vaccine, the word of God, 
the vaccine of the world, if he enters you, hey, no thing the devil can do about it. Say this sickness is too much. I went to this hospital. I went to that. One was a lady was giving that testimony somewhere. This is the first day of the crusade. Second day. What was her testimony? Can you remember? Uh -huh. Stand up. The girl, she almost looked like you. Praise God. She testified that she was having a migraine headache. That she have went to several hospitals without uh, any cure. But uh, when uh, someone told her about the crusade, she said uh, it's just a normal way uh, Christians have been going about their crusade. But she was convinced to come. And uh, during uh, prayer, she got her healing. She got a dose of the word. It knocks out the pains. And she was saying, I'm so happy. He, and you need to see the excitement in her heart. Amen. You are going home with such excitement. Everything devil has done in your life, the Lord will knock it off now. I say I chase it away in the name of Jesus. I say I chase it away in the name of Jesus. Hey! That is God's immunization. He immunizes you from every calamity. Amen. We enjoy, He will accept you from all kinds of things. What others are suffering of? You don't suffer the same thing. He, 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 he sets you free from evils, from sicknesses, from causes, from sinful lifestyle, from all kinds of addiction. He said, look at in Exodus 12, verse 13. Let's take some scripture because of some people who are addicted to scripture. Exodus 12, verse 13 says, And I will severe. Exodus 22. Exodus, sorry. Exodus, what did I quote? Sorry, I'm, uh, let me pick it up. 12 verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token. Okay, I saw some tears different. And the blood shall be to you for a what? For a token upon the houses where, where ye are. And when I see the blood, what will I do? I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. There is a seal in your life. It is called the blood of Jesus. When that blood is on you, it says, I will, when I see the blood upon you, I will pass over you, and plague shall not be upon you. So shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. That uh, every plague, plague means sickness, every disease, every COVID-19, every HIV, every high blood pressure, diabetes, none of that will be on you in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? I have the seal of the blood. Say, I have the seal of the blood of Jesus. Praise God. That, that seal is on you. The blood, the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 24, he says he speak better things than the blood of what? Abel. In the Old Testament, they used the blood of animal, but he couldn't do it. So Jesus came in the New Testament with his own blood. Where that blood is a seed upon us. And when you, the devil sees that blood on you, they tremble. Praise the name of the Lord. That is why we are in, spiritually speaking, we are in Goshen. Everybody say, I'm in Goshen. A Goshen is a land of safety meant for the righteous. You remember when Jacob left the land of Canaan to follow the son to Egypt. Then the Pharaoh said they should create a place for them, the Israelites. And they created a place they called Goshen. That was where they went and stayed. And while they were there, every calamity, when eventually that Pharaoh died, the Pharaoh that did not know God, no Jacob, I was there, Joseph, the Pharaoh came to power. And then when he saw that the Israelites we are growing beyond measure, the Bible says they became more than them. They grew and grew in Goshen. They became so many that this Pharaoh decided to punish them, deal with them. Gave, he set up tax masters, make them to be making bricks. And it was terrible. He was punishing and setting, destroying them. But then God said, I'm going to deliver my people. From the hands of these wicked people. When they cried to God, God raised a Moses. And Moses went to Pharaoh 
after he had an encounter with God in the burning bush, that he should go and rescue God's people. He went to Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, my, let my people go. Pharaoh said, no, I don't have respect for any God. They are going nowhere. He said, uh, if you don't allow them to go, calamity will befall you. He said, I don't care. And you know those calamities started happening. How many major plagues? Huh? Ten major plagues came. Do you know each of those plagues, none go to Goshen, where the children of God were. That God is no Pasha. If he did it then, he will do it now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Everybody say, I am in Goshen. Hope you know that. You are in spiritual Goshen. So, all the calamity that were happening, none happened to them that was in Goshen. They marveled. So, you are accepted. That's why we say you are born to reign. You are accepted from every sickness, every disease, every calamity, every evil happening. I say you are accepted in the name of Jesus Christ. It will not near you. Just have, if you believe the word of God, it will work for you in Jesus' name. God does not destroy the righteous with the unrighteous. He has never done it. So when he wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he said to Abraham, Bible said, we God do anything without revealing it to his prophet. Amos 3 verse 7. He said, now let me reveal it to the prophet. I want to destroy this place. He said, oh God, can I please talk to you? In case you see 50 righteous people, will you still destroy the place? He said, no. I'm sorry, I want to say another one. Uh, let me remove uh, 10 or 5. What if they are 45 or 40? What if they are 30? He said, I will not destroy, I will not destroy, I will not destroy. What does that mean? God does not destroy the righteous with the unrighteous. Are you hearing me? So when you see the unrighteous suffering certain things and calamities and evil, don't believe it will happen to you. You are different. Everybody say, I am different. Say, I am accepted. Enjoy your exemption right in Jesus' name. You know, some people, the confection they make is a problem. Something happened to somebody say it will happen to me. It will not happen to you. You are you are different. You are the light of the world. A city that is built on a hill cannot be hidden. You are different. It does not destroy the righteous with the unrighteous. That's why you, we said you are born to reign. You are peculiar. You have the royal priesthood. You are very special to God. Praise the name of the Lord. You are not like them. <laughs> Amen. You are going to live a life people will be jealous of. They say, why are you so different from us? That's one of the ways we are going to be preaching the gospel now. People will look at you and say, why are you so different? He said, I have something that you don't have. Jesus Christ in me, the hope of glory. This glory you are seeing all around me is because I have Jesus in the inside of me. I will say I am accepted. You are going home with us, certificate today. Hallelujah. See a woman who just got married. Say, are you married? Say, yes, I'm married. Where is it? This is certificate of marriage. Say, you have not finished the marriage. Say, yes, but uh, I got it ahead by faith ahead of time. Praise the name of the Lord. Please take note of that. God does not destroy the righteous with who? With your righteous. That is always settled. When he destroyed the firstborn, if you read Exodus chapter 11, verse 5 to 7, all the firstborn were destroyed when he went to end the plague. But none got to Goshen. The Bible says in Exodus 11, verse 5, Exodus 11, verse 5, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh that seated upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the May servant that is behind the meal, and all the firstborn of beasts, and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, and as there and such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue, against man or beast, that ye shall know 
that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptian and what? And Israel. Those of them that were in Goshen, he said nothing will happen to them. And it's the same God you are serving. Praise God. I want to say the same God. There's a song someone used to sing. He's the same God. On such a God. Hold on. One Thank you. Clap your heart together. No, I pass. Where did you do the Riaza? <laughs> this choir, they are ever ready. I say, jam your heart together for my choir. Otherwise, I'll give you a microphone to sing it like that now. <laughs> Thank you. Always ready. Praise God. Even when there is judgmental plagues, it doesn't come upon the righteous. It will come upon every other person. But we not come upon the righteous. That is why the blood of Jesus Christ is our certificate of what? Exemption. The Bible says the life of the flesh is eh? the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17 verse 11. Your life is in your blood. That's why any sickness that has nothing to do with your blood cannot take your life easily. Why HIV, hypertension, and all these cancer, all of those sicknesses, when it, you, you check your blood, they see sickness there. It's because why they are deadly and they are terminal disease because they are in your blood. The Bible says your life is in your blood. But against any of the children of Israel shall not it. Okay, we have read that. Term. I thought you were quoting Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11. Whatever touches your blood touches your life. Almost all killer diseases should discredit tapper with the blood. And yet, the blood is also life that saves God's this day, that, that saves uh, that saves. Praise God. I say praise God. So the blood is your certificate of exception. Once you are born again, you have the Spirit of God upon you, the blood has set you free. And you will enjoy the goodness of God, the, the exemption of God in Jesus' name. Please, I'd like you to go home with that understanding that today, as a child of God, I'm exempted from destruction. Don't speak like sinners. Or those who are, there are believers who don't have knowledge. So they talk like sinners as well. But one of the primary responsibilities God gave to me is to let you know who you are in Christ. Get people converted. Bring some together. Disciple them for me. Let them know who they are in Christ. So that they can enjoy the goodness of God. They can become achievers in righteousness. This is what we are driving at as a church. Are you hear what I'm saying? I'm always very excited when I see you manifesting who you are in Christ. I prefer to hear people telling me here. I went out in my street, I organized a mini crusade. People got saved. People got healed. I lay hands on people. All manner of miracles were happening. That's the kind of thing I want to hear. Are you hearing me? That would mean I'm training you well. You are, being, you are becoming a true disciple. Disciples are not always too, too many. Are you hearing me? It doesn't take God any, anything to fill here and jam here with people. 
but he's bringing people who should be discipled for him and from today you will never suffer what they suffer in jesus name what we are living for people we live a life an exemplary life when you preach pray they are not listening to you say look at me if i teach you about about the seven areas of life teach you about spiritual life and you are not it doesn't make sense to you. I say look at me look at my spiritual life can't don't you enjoy it winning souls bringing son to christ living in holiness and in righteousness to the best of my ability as god lets me if i teach you about uh, about about uh, physical body life i say look at me can't you see me enjoy good health have you ever come here they say pastor is is too sick cannot come and preach you think I, my body is not made of bones and flesh like you is well it's the same thing when i teach you about teach you about family life you don't want to listen look at my family look at my wife and children and myself can't you see we are living a, an exemplary life if you don't like me i like my own praise god ah, it's wonderful you 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 my nothing gives me joy more than my wife and my children every one of them they don't disobey me they don't uh, they listen to me they are doing so well they are making me proud and i have plenty of them because when we have four daughters they say four children do pastor no they get plenty of children four don't do i say i agree but then god gave me a revelation of two six of them, every one of them doing so well Today, about four, four, four of them have master degrees. They are out walking, doing something, doing so well, everywhere, everywhere. Grandchildren, every, full everywhere. My in-laws are wonderful, wonderful people. Everything about me is wonderful when it comes to that area. Are you hearing me? Have you ever come to church? My child is in, in town, he's not in church. Have you ever seen it? It's stupid. You come to church, your own your own son or daughter is not in church. Is 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 smoking in their hands somewhere? Are you in church? What are you preaching? If you can't bring up your family in the way of the Lord, you are not qualified to do the things of God. And even if the person go haywire, then you you grab the person and, and pray. I told you how my one of my friends, when he saw the daughter was misbehaving, he naked himself in the night. Say God. I, how will I be preaching? My daughter will be like this. When he prayed earnestly, the following morning, the daughter came knocking at the door with tears in her eyes. Say, Daddy, I'm sorry for the way I've been living. I'm not supposed to disgrace you like that. And the girl changed. She has graduated from university now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you preach, they won't listen. You say, Look at me. Is it financial life? Look at me. Am I suffering? You know how much I spend on people. Eh? I check the record out there and say, Kai, if not that my wife eh, understands, no woman will check this kind of record and say and say be, be excited. How much we give out, give out, give out, give out, give out. But the good news is that the more you give, the more you get. Are you hearing me? But then when I talk like this, tomorrow now, about 10, 12, 30 people will line up. Money. I want to start business no house rent no money for this no money for that i want to travel to lagos i want to even if i sell everything i have i can't i can't meet everybody's day but then god is faithful i will say god is faithful you are accepted is it educational life all of us are edu not just educated we are educating people Is it social life? Amen. One man of God just went to be with the Lord, and he said, "Look, I can everywhere. When I went there, everybody said, I can't even know you for crusade. Anything crusade, crusade. You are crusade. In fact, you are Mister Crusade. They all know me for that. Are you hearing me? So they want to do a crusade, and they say, hey, you be the one to head the crusade. You should be. What are you known for?" Or is it the last material life? I've, I've stopped paying landlord rent for a very long time. <laughs> Praise God. I see God lifting you. I say, I see God lifting you. When we preach, they won't listen. You say, look at us. Things will change. They may not continue like that. Things will not continue like that. 
you may say wow look at what this man is talking where will man be like this things are turning around for you now things are turning around for you now that's why you are here this will take a new shape this will take a new stand in the name of jesus